I'd never been in an electric storm, with lightning striking all around me, in the dark, in the rain, at sea. But then there's a first time for everything. After what had been yet another awful passage, my ordeal was coming to an end. At last, the town of Santa Marta hove into view, and I sailed into Colombia. I met up with another cruiser friend of mine, John, who'd been in town a week or so, so he knew all the places to go, including this rather quaint cafe. Thank <laughs> you. 
new safety regulations in the boatyard. <laughs> We're just in the boatyard here. I'm going to see about getting my boat lifted. And uh, I'm with my friend John and his boat Heckler. And uh, she's looking really good out of the water. He's waiting for bottom paint, but uh, it seems to have got lost in the post. So she's not got a bottom paint on yet. Um, so he's having to wait a bit longer than he wanted to. So hot today. So, so hot. Gotta find some air conditioning. So hot out here and there's a bloody great storm just about to start. So I'm gonna go into the lounge they've got here in the boat, uh, in the marina, so I can get some work done on the computer. I met up with a couple of friends of mine, Matt and Christine, who just like to walk. That's a nice one. And we walked and we walked and we walked, but the good thing was we were walking towards a bit of paradise, a bit of Europe, and air conditioning. I can see air conditioning. It's hot out here. Here we are at Civilization. Gonna buy a few things in here. Aircon, man, aircon. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't need that one. You don't need that. <laughs> Just making coffee this morning uh, here in uh, Santa Marta Marina. As you can probably tell by the light behind me, um, it's very, very hot in this marina. Um, I've got some work to do. I meant to do it early this morning before the sun got too hot, uh, but I've kind of been a bit lazy. I've got to take um, the cover for the mainsail off the boom, which means I might have to take the mainsail off. Uh, there's a lady here. Um, who fixes, uh, she's, a, she's a Brit, she's a cruiser like me, and uh, she fixes canvas, which is ideal. So uh, I managed to, to, to get her attention and say, help. So she's gonna do some jobs for me, but I need to get it ready for it to be picked up. So I've got to do that now. So I'll have a nice hot cup of coffee and then after work. Uh, it's a damnably hot day already, and it's only um, quarter past eight in the morning. First of all, I've got to take the sunshade off. This is the bad boy here that needs repairing. It's in a bit of a sorry state, but the other end down there is really badly ripped, so that's what she's gonna repair. Um, and it, it fits underneath the mainsail, so I might have to take the mainsail off. So I'm gonna do this as quickly as I can. It is frying out here. Haul up the sail, which makes room at the bottom down here. And hopefully I can now Pull this through because as you can see it fits in the track that the mainsail sits in so uh, normally you take the mainsail off but I'm being sneaky I should be able to pull that through now that'll save me a lot of work you can see a bit clearer now it's off you can see all down here uh, that's all ripped this is the part that sort of sits in the, in the track on the uh, boom and actually uh, this part's also torn so, uh, and the, these zips are, uh, these holes here are there, uh, are to let the, um, uh, the reef, uh, reefing lines go through. So yeah, uh, to have a new one made up would be rather expensive. It's all good stuff this, but it, uh, it's seen a few years now. So I got the mainsail back down again. I managed to haul it up the mast to get the uh, cover from underneath it. And then I put my uh, candy striped cover 
over the top of everything there to keep me cool because it is a hot 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 day today back in the cool of the boat I've got this out it's uh, top quality gear bought this as an off cut uh, so it was cheap uh, as you can see it's not finished off at the edges so uh, having my friend uh, she's going to put a hem on it and I'm going to use that as a sunshade in the cockpit Working hard today, it's really, really hot in here. I'm absolutely covered in sweat and rust. Uh, today's job is to open up the starboard water tank. You might have seen before, uh, opened up the port one. Uh, the idea of uh, putting some water bladders in here possibly, but certainly to clean out the mess, because can't use them anymore, full of rust. And also for extra storage space, uh, going on and doing some big passages coming up. I'll be telling you about that soon. Uh, so we're trying to get this work done while I'm in a marina. Got my friend John here, he's just helped me because the top of these things are blooming heavy. So it's taking the two of us to get it out into the cockpit. So uh, let's have a look at this. There you go, it's the same as the last one. I won't go on about it because you've already seen it. It's the same. Uh, 80 bots to get the top off. The difference here is the, there is a sender, uh, which is a little uh, unit designed to sense how much water's in the uh, tank. As far as I can understand, this one used to fill uh, more than the other one. It got more use. The boat sort of lent over as it was being filled. Consequently, there's a lot of rust in here. You can put your finger in there. That was a very good idea. There's, there's my mate John there, he's, <laughs> he's, he's directing this one. <laughs> my cabin's full of stuff. Uh, that top there is going to be reused uh, as is this spacer here. Another piece of wood there and loads of tools, so lots of things to clean up. But eventually this is going to get used as storage space, uh, like this space just here, which is my place to keep uh, oats and pasta and sugar. This is almost like Groundhog Day. Uh, th that one is occupying exactly the same space as the other one did a few months ago. John helped me uh, carry it out through the companionway. That is a heavy piece of steel. I'm hoping to come up with a deal with a, a local metal worker or something to exchange this for services or products or something uh, it'd be ashamed to throw it away but in the meantime i'm harvesting any stainless steel i just noticed the bolts that hold the uh, sender on um, are all stainless steel it looks a bit messy got bits of filler and paint and stuff but that is a stainless steel bolt and to buy that especially here you're talking probably about 50 cents one us dollar for each of those bolts so, uh, the, uh, plus I got the nuts as well to go with them, so you never know. It is raining, big time. Uh, so we've, we've gone into rain mode. On this side of the boat I've got buckets. <laughs> I know it keeps, I know what you're saying, it's, it keeps missing. Anyway, we're collecting water over there. Uh, and putting it in that, uh, that that can there. You can't see it, but I got some stuff uh, washing on the deck. And on this side of the boat, more water collection. Got the uh, modified, repaired sail cover on. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's <laughs> funny filling with water now. Um, it's got a, a few little uh, alterations still to be done on it, but uh, that's been done today. You may say, why am I so tight? You know, collecting water like this and, and, and doing this. Uh, the, the marina charges water and uh, nothing here is cheap. The country food and things like that are all cheap. It's a nice place, but the marina charges a lot of money for everything. Yeah, it's um, water, electricity, anything that you use, it's all charged for here. It is the end of the day and I hope that uh, the rain stops soon because uh, I'd like to go out and get some food and see a few of my friends. But it is so much cooler now it's rained. We needed that. In Santa Marta, the cruisers organized their own happy hour. Five o'clock every evening, everybody would get together and have a few beers and maybe something a little extra. Because I had so much work to do on the boat, I didn't really get out to see Colombia itself. 
spent a lot of time in the city, Santa Marta, but met some excellent people, including this lovely couple. She was heavily pregnant, and they ran this awesome street food store. We just love what they did. He's got his street food at his best, really. Oh. Shadow and I are just sort of sitting in the sun, roasting slowly. Got a lot of the rust jobs done. After the rain, you get this happening. There's no way you'd want to put your feet in this water, let alone swim in it. All this work is in preparation for the next leg of the trip, which is going to be uh, quite a long passage, for somewhere like five days or something, uh, to uh, Panama. Did you get that little clue right at the end about where this adventure might be heading to? Yeah, exciting stuff. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to also to my incredible patrons for their support. If you'd like to help, please check out my Patreon page. Also, for real-time updates to find out what I'm actually doing right now, uh, Facebook Adventures of an Old Sea Dog. Uh, the links are below, uh, all information as well about the boat and the series. Please don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up. Love you all. Thank you very much. Don't forget to tune in next time. Running now, just pointed at me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That'll do brilliant.